Welcome back to Silhouette Success. If you are new around here, welcome. I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette. And today we are going to be taking a deep dive into the transform panel. I know it doesn't sound all that exciting, but there's a lot to learn and you're not going to want to miss the sheer panel. It's actually the most exciting part in the transform panel. So stick around to the end. It is the last tab in the transform panel. If you are wanting to take your designs to the next level, you have to learn the software. So let's do this. Here we are in Silhouette Studio. I have already brought in some basic shapes and text. You're going to want to open up your transform panel, which is here on the right hand side. We're going to go through each of the tabs separately. The first tab is the line and your choices are center, horizontal, vertical. Then we have spacing, horizontal and vertical. First option here is center to page. You can select your object, click center to page and it will bring it to the middle of your design mat. Now when you have more than one object, you can select them and click on the center button and that will align them perfectly. The next choices are horizontal. We can align to the left. That lines both of the left edges up. We have align center and align right. Next we have the vertical choices. Let's put that back in the middle. First one is align top and then align middle and align bottom. Now for the spacing, we're going to need all three of these objects. Let's grab one, pull it over this way. We'll pull this one over here. Now if we select all three of them and click on the horizontal spacing, it will put the middle object in the center of the outer two objects. Let's do the same thing for vertical. Put this one down here. You can select all three. Click on the vertical spacing and it will center the middle object there. The next tab is scale. I don't use this tab very often. If I have an element and the size is not quite right, I usually use the corner boxes to scale it, or I go up top here and enter my numbers. This is lock aspect ratio button. When that is closed or locked, you can type in a number. And the width and the height will adjust together so that your design element stays the same shape. Now, if it is unlocked, we can change one of these numbers I'll put nine in for the height and only the height will change. The width will stay the same and it has changed our square into a rectangle. Now in the transform panel, you can do that same exact thing under specify dimensions. Your lock aspect ratio button is here and you can enter the numbers here and then apply. Now up here is your scale buttons. You can make it 33% of the original size. We have to select it first and click on 33. And that is now one third of the original size. If you click on 50%, it will bring it down to half 
of the original size. And then you can take it up to two times the original size and so on. The next tab on the transform panel is rotate and we are going to use the text for this one. So let's bring the text onto the mat, select it. It starts off at zero degrees. Now we're rotating to 90 degrees and we can rotate to 180 degrees or 270 degrees or we can add in a custom number here. And this section down here is rotate by. So this one you will rotate by 45 degrees clockwise. Now since it is already at 45 degrees, if you click on rotate by 90 degrees, it's going to start from the 45 degree position and then rotate it another 90 degrees. You can also add in a custom number here or use the up and down arrows and you have your apply button at the bottom. Let's rotate it to zero degrees and that will bring us back to where we started. Take a look at the green dot that's up here. You can rotate it by this little green dot as well. But notice that the green dot is in the same position as zero here. If we click on rotate to 90 degrees, it shows us where the green dot is here. Next, we're going to cover the move tab. This section is move by. You can move it left or right and up or down and you can enter your increments here. Right now it's set to one inch. So let's move it to the right by one inch. Move it up, down, and enter whatever number you want here. Let's try five. And it will move it over to the left by five inches. Now I have to be honest with you when I say that this next part took me some digging, but I finally figured it out. This little grid here is kind of cool. I'm going to bring my square back onto the mat to start with, and then I'm going to scale my Silhouette Studio down just a bit. In order to use this grid, you need to select both elements click on one of the spaces. This one says center at top left. So let's click on that and apply. Let's do center at middle right. Click apply. This only works if you have both elements selected. Next, we're going to take a look at the X and Y grid. Go ahead and select our text. And we are going to put in six for both of the X and Y axes. Click apply. Now what it has done is it has taken this text and it has put the end of the word silhouette at six inches here and it has centered the text over six inches here. This is a little bit finicky and to be honest it's not something I would really use a whole lot. The next tab we want to look at is Shear, and this one is pretty neat. I'm going to enlarge Silhouette Studio so you can see a little bit better. 
when you have your object or text selected, you can come over to horizontal shear and select any one of these. Use the slider or enter a number. If we click on horizontally shear by 30 degrees, it slants it to a 30 degree angle. Put it back to zero. You can see with the custom, you can just nudge it a little bit. And then the vertical shear tilts it up and down by 30 degrees. There's custom settings for this one as well. Down here you have show shear handles. That brings up these little sliders all around the bounding box. And you can slide them up and down to get the effect that you want. When I'm going through and creating my own designs, I use the transform panel and the modify panel the most. So if you have some room left for more information, you're going to want to check out this video next, create something amazing, and I'll see you in the next video.